In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I just want them to be happy. How many times do we hear parents say this about their children? Certainly a good desire. All parents should want their children to be happy. But we have to question, what kind of happiness are they talking about? Happiness in this life or the next? It's clear from our saint today, Saint Rita, she wanted her husband and two children to be happy, not just in this life, but forever. She understood her primary role as a parent and a spouse was to help get her children and her husband into heaven. St. Rita's story is one that is unique, being not only a wife, a mother, but eventually a widower, and finally a religious sister. Rita Lotti was born in Umbria, Italy, in the same city that Saints Benedict, Francis, and Claire came from. She was born in 1381 in the city of Rocca Perena. Her parents were God-fearing, holy people, responsible for many conversions and the settling of many disputes. As Rita got older, she desired to enter the convent, but submitted to her parents' wishes to marry, seeing it the will of God. She eventually married a man named Fernando and had two children, Giovanni and Paolo. Rita made her home a holy place for her family, but eventually tragedy struck and her husband was stabbed to death and left lying in the street. He was a victim of what was called La Vendetta, or blood feud, a feud that, that could last for generations. At that time in Italy, if someone in your family was murdered, it would be quickly avenged with another murder by someone in the victim's family. And then this murder would be avenged and this cycle would go on and on. So with murder upon murder, more family members would be drawn into the heinous crime, striking down unsuspecting victims, souls deprived of last rites, and putting the souls of each family member in jeopardy, roped in the blood feud. Before the murder of her husband, her children were good, God-fearing young men, but being pulled into the existing feud between the two families, they were encouraged by family members to uphold this twisted sense of honor. And so they began to be swayed by this pressure. One day, Rita overheard her sons talking of their plan to avenge their father's death. She summoned them and tearfully begged them to abandon their plan, calling to their minds the Lord who forgave his enemies and suffered so that they may have eternal life. She plainly told them that they should not avenge their father's death because they too would be, become murderers. Rita did all she could to try and persuade them to forgive their father's killer so as to save their own souls and end the vicious cycle which deprived so many souls of heaven. Being unable to assist them through persuasion, Rita fled to the foot of the cross and begged the Lord to change their desires. Placing their eternal salvation above all else, Rita fervently pleaded to God to either change their minds or take them to himself before more souls are roped into this unending process. This mother knew well, far better for God to take the lives of her children rather than her sons commit an act that could send them to hell and the souls of countless others. God saw the intentions of her heart, and within a year, both of her sons fell ill and were taken to the Lord 
with a well-provided death, prepared to go to their judgment, having abandoned their plans for revenge. Now to most people, to most parents in today's world, this prayer of St. Rita sounds absolutely absurd. But Rita considered all the lives cut short and the loss of souls that the vendetta would continue. As a parent, she had only her children's true good, their true happiness in mind, heaven. So many fail in this regard today. She understood well, her children are either going to spend eternity with God or eternally separated from Him in hell. Yet how so many parents think very little, if at all, about eternity, not only for themselves, but for the ones whom they love. And sadly, this is true of many Catholics. Their children receive the sacraments, baptism, penance, communion, confirmation. Maybe they're even married in the church. And yet they fail to truly catechize their children about the four last things, about the things that never end. And so their children grow up thinking little about God and loving Him. They spend all their time in life concerned with sports, school, going to the best colleges, getting a good job, making a lot of money, worried about the inheritance, degrees, a nice house, and giving little to no thought about what's really at stake, eternal life or eternal damnation. Parents must understand their job is not only to provide temporally for their children, but above all, spiritually. How many parents sleep well at night thinking, my children are taken care of, plenty of money in the trust, they have a good job, a nice house, everyone is healthy, everything's okay. And yet they fail to realize that their children may be rapidly headed towards hell if they don't change and turn to God. Their children sailing along this calm stream of ignorance that leads off the cliff. The things that are disorderly valued today, passing things, offering a false sense of security, paving the road to hell. The judgments of such parents will be severe because their primary job was to lead their children to heaven. Parents, this is your primary role. Your children are God's. You are to ensure their, to the best of your ability that they go back to God. This was St. Rita's focus. The Good Shepherd wants a sheep home. And heaven help the parent who acts like a hireling and doesn't care for the sheep. This is many in our culture. They need to wake up. We all need to wake up. If your children know nothing of God, then you are sending them to perdition. If they are addicted to material things and don't know it's wrong, they will be in cosmic shock when their end comes. When the curtain of this life is taken back and they see that none of the things follow them, they will stand naked thinking, I thought my parents loved me. How come they never told me how important loving God was and how important is our Catholic faith? How come they never spoke to me of the four last things? And because of it, now I'm being hurled into the abyss because my parents trained me to be only concerned of earthly security and gave me a false sense of security, security about what happens after death. I'll get to heaven as long as I'm a good person. 
How often, even in the church and at home, we're afraid to mention hell. We don't want to scare our kids. kids. But what's the alternative? And we see this best at Fatima, where Our Lady appeared to the three children, all under the age of 10, and showed them hell. Was Our Lady, who's the most perfect, most merciful and loving of all mothers, wrong to do this? Were these children too young to, for, to see this? We know, of course not. It was precisely because she loved them that they were given this vision, and it changed their whole life. Imagine children under 10 years old doing, doing all they can to save souls from hell, saving souls just like Giovanni and Paolo, who were set on the way of perdition. After her, suit, her two sons' deaths, St. Rita now lived alone. She lived solely for God, spending most of her time in prayer, increasing her penances, and helping the poor. She again desired to become a religious, and after having been repeatedly denied entrance into the Augustinian convent, she was finally accepted after being miraculously transported behind the walls. And so she sold all she owned and lived a life increasing in virtue, meditating constantly on the passion of Jesus. Going constantly to the foot of the cross, as she always did. And one day it was here that she received the stigmata of a single thorn from Christ's crown, which remained in her forehead her whole life, causing her immense pain. The thorn in St. Rita's head signifies her singular focus in life, heaven. Heaven for her husband, heaven for her children, heaven for herself. On her deathbed, Rita asked her cousin to go to her old home and to bring back a rose from her old garden. But it was winter, and there was snow on the ground, and the ground was frozen. Her cousin told her this was impossible for a rose to be blooming at that time. But Rita, the saint of the impossible, responded, Nothing is impossible with God. Her cousin set out at once and found a single red rose in full bloom on a leafless bush. She plucked the rose and returned it to her cousin. The saint received the rose with great joy and gladness. She kissed it and contemplated in that rose her sweet Jesus, crowned with thorns, and also the sign that her children were indeed safe in heaven. St. Rita handed the miraculous flower to their superior, and from her hand it passed to the hands of all the nuns who gave thanks to God. To commemorate this miraculous event, roses are blessed each year in all the churches of the Augustinian order on today's feast of Rita distributed to the and distributed to the faithful after tonight's mass there'll be a blessing of roses during the blessing hold your roses up high as they're sprinkled with holy water and incensed these roses are especially efficacious in healing and warding off evil Keep them in your homes. Give them to the sick. Bring your blessed roses with you to the altar rail when you kiss the relic. On this day in 1457, St. Rita died, and the sweet smell of roses was present throughout the whole convent. Many miracles began to occur through her intercession almost immediately. Today, she's one of the most powerful and beloved saints. May the sweet smell of roses in this church tonight 
Remind us all of St. Rita's continual presence and eagerness to assist us in all our needs, but especially to all parents. Let the rose remind you of the precious gift of your family, and let the lesson of St. Rita, your primary focus is heaven for those who you love. St. Rita knew that if her family made it to heaven, then they would never have to say goodbye again. That only then they would be truly okay, truly be taken care of, truly safe, far more than any passing things of this world. In the heavenly reunion, they would be truly happy. The roses you hold in your hands will one day fade. But the winter rose tells us of a place where the rose never fade, a place where death does not reach. May Saint Rita intercede for us that we make it to that place, past the thorns of life, where we will be happy with our family, with God, forever. Saint Rita, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Mm-hmm.